so all these phenomena, uh, these are self-reinforcing uh, uh, phenomena, and that's what characteristic of the market, and, of, and even more of history. Do you want to follow up on that, Robert? Then we have Joe. Okay. Yeah, just regarding the self-reinforcing reinforcing, uh, forces, we have in economics this idea of destabilizing speculation, which basically tends away from the equilibrium. And how does that relate similar or different from the? It's 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 a it's an ex I mean, uh, economic theory <coughs> recognizes certainly of the. Uh, uh, of these processes, I don't think it, you know, it uh, goes far enough in recognizing the fact that it's sort of built into the into the, the, the system. But it is a, an example uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, now, you know, speculation in currency markets is only one aspect the instability of, of currency. But it is an image, so it's, it's related. It's, it's all part of it. Yeah, I mean, we could say that our political situation now is also part of uh, the stabilizing speculation. Yes, yes, yes. Joe, and then Raj. Okay. How many questions do I have? Uh, <laughs> one for the moment. We'll come back. <laughs> the most important one I wanted to raise Related to the radical fallibility notion, uh, where you basically say that it's impossible for us to know the truth. And then in another part of the book, you also say uh, you care a great deal about the truth and you want us always to pursue it. The two positions seem uh, contradictory. So could you speak to the appearance of the contradiction? No, I don't think it's contradictory. It's a little complicated because to get close to reality, basically I define truth more or less. I don't define it, but in the correspondence, I rely heavily on the correspondence theory of truth, which means that your statement is supposed to correspond to realities, facts. Uh, what really exists. Uh, and I think it's very important to, to come as close as possible to understanding the reality, because we live in reality. So our actions have their impact in reality and very often uh, have unintended consequences because our, our understanding is inherently divergent from reality. So getting close to it is important. So uh, that is the, the, uh, the thrust uh, of, of, of my quest. So you know, get as close to it as possible, and you get closer to it by recognizing that you can't actually get there. And I think you know, modern, modern cognitive uh, uh, science has actually kind of proven it now scientifically um, uh, because the, the reality in which you in, in which you act but the, the the person that you see when you look at me is it actually has a time lapse of half a second from when from from what I was half a second ago because it takes that long for the mind to process, and this has now been measured and proven. So With regard to the correspondence theory of truth, okay, Popper's version of the, you know, the case, we're not speaking about a correspondence of the mind with what's out there in reality. We're talking about a correspondence of statements. So the point is, if I write down a statement, you seem to be saying that the statement uh, cannot correspond to the facts. Yes, they can't actually describe <coughs> the facts. And my question is, uh, how do you know that? Uh, isn't I'm there not a that. possibility that you can describe the facts? Uh, 
in other words, the position of Popper is that uh, there's a possibility that our statements are able to correspond to the facts. Now, we can never know for sure that they correspond to the facts. Okay? So he's a fallibilist, okay? as much as you're a fallibilist. But at the same time, he doesn't go the extra step and say that it's impossible for us to know the truth. I am not and saying because that. he doesn't do that, he is free then to continue to seek the truth and to pursue the truth, and it seems to be possible to arrive at the truth. So therefore, the ideal of the truth is more powerful. Mm -hmm. It seems to me in his philosophy, okay, then so um, yours. No, first of all, I'm not saying that you, that you can't make true statements. I, th I think you can make true statements. Uh, so that's a very important, if I haven't made it clear, I should make it clear that, that uh, it is possible to make true statements. What I'm saying is, and this is the concept of radical fallibility, is that since uh, it's so difficult to get, to find true statements, uh, you, you, when you have something that actually works in reality, you tend to depend on it and and exploit it in a meta in a, in by using it as a metaphor in a metaphorical sense. You extend it to a point where it's no longer valid. And of course, I use science as the prime example of that because science really works, particularly in the field of natural science. But because it works in natural science, you then uh, try to use it in social science using the same methods and, and, and criteria. And, and social science uh, suffers from natural science envy. Uh, it tries to imitate it uh, uh, rather slavishly. And doing that uh, carries, it, it carries the metaphor uh, too far. Now, a proper brilliantly show, showed how uh, Marxism uh, was not scientific because it had propositions that couldn't be, uh, that couldn't be tested. Uh, uh, and I take it, take it further because I think that, that classical economic theory, the mainstream economic theory, uh, falls into the same category. It, uh, you, you had a very good uh, phrase, far, far from reality conditions. Uh, I, I use uh, very often far from equilibrium and still far from reality. And in a way, actually, maybe uh, uh, I should think about it. Maybe I should have used that um, in my book more uh, because it, it really means more what I had in, uh, had in mind. So you have sometimes the conditions when you get really quite far away from reality. I think the war on terror is a is a good example. <laughs> so so that's that's where that's why I think there is no contradiction in, in my mind. And this uh, postulate of radical fallibility, namely that not only that we may be wrong, which is what Popper said, that I go further and I say we are liable to be wrong. It's a working hypothesis which happen, which actually can be shown to be false because you have, for instance, all of science as evidence that, you can, you, that you're not always wrong. So it's, it's really a working hypothesis, which, which as a working hypothesis works, uh, works very well because it focuses you on the right, uh, on the areas that are currently left out, particularly in scientific uh, uh, discourse. Uh, the irrational, what is called maybe irrational, or the unpredictable, and it's, it certainly has worked very well in financial markets uh, because it, it um, directs you at the flaws of whatever the prevailing uh, wisdom or belief is, and then you can exploit that. That is not. That is. Insight, I wouldn't call it knowledge, it's insight that you can then <coughs> exploit uh, and which I have done. <coughs>